this is a fairly simple problem to solve. The interesting part is that what all applications can come out of it and how this problem is a gateway to the Keynes algorithm. So let's explore a little more. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, I will tell you how you can approach this problem and find an efficient solution. After that, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can visualize how all of this is actually working in action. And then at the very end, I just want to take a moment and discuss some of the alternatives and some of the various applications where this problem comes in handy. So without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let us try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. And as I said before, it is a fairly simple problem and pretty straightforward too. So you are given a binary array. That means the array only has zeros and one. And you have to tell me what are the maximum number of consecutive ones that you can find in this array. So for example, if you look at the first test case, how are you finding the consecutive ones? I have two consecutive ones over here and I have two consecutive ones over here. So out of them, what is the maximum number? They are still two, right? So for the first test case, you can say that two is your answer. Similarly, for our second test case, if you notice, I have one one over here and then I have two consecutive ones over here and then I have one one over here. So what are the maximum number of consecutive ones you can find? They are two again, right? So for this test case also, two is your answer. So basically, if your test case changes, basically if you have one, one, one additional ones over here, then you will find four consecutive ones over here and then four will be your answer, correct? So pretty basic stuff. But however, if you feel that you have now understood the problem statement even better, feel free to first try it out. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution and see how you can approach it. To understand the problem, it is better that we take up a large example, right? Because for smaller examples, you can just look at the array and then understand that, hey, these are the most consecutive ones. So over here, I have a much larger array. And because this problem is very basic, if you find this in an interview, your interviewer is expecting that you solve this problem only in one scan. They do not want that you keep on iterating over the array. So let us say you are given this array and you have to attack it. So when you start to approach this problem, a thought will come to your mind. Okay, what I can do is I can start to scan my array from the very beginning, right? And when you are scanning, you see that the first element is a zero. So technically you only have to find out the consecutive ones. This zero is of no use to you, correct? So what I can do is I can just skip this and I can move on to my next element. As soon as I move on to my next element, that is a zero again. So that is once again useless for us. What we will do is we will simply skip it and then move on to the next element. And now we get our first one. So what do you do with it? Yes, you got a one, but you have to found out the consecutive ones. So I can say that, okay, I found one one over here. And what we are going to do is we are going to keep a track of it. So right now my count is just one, correct? What I'm going to do is I will move ahead to my next element. The next element is again a one, right? So that is good for us. So what I found out is, okay, I have two ones over here. And then what I will do is I will add one to the existing count I already had. So what I will do is I will just add one over here and that gives me a two. So far so good, you found two ones. Now what happens if you move ahead? As soon as you move ahead, you get a zero. And that tells you one thing. It means that all the consecutive ones you had up till this point, they have just ended because this is not a one. So what do you have to do in the problem? In the problem, you need to find out the maximum number of ones you can find. And this can be a certain candidate, correct? Think like this. If your array was only this, then the maximum number of ones are just two, correct? So we are gonna just store this value. And since we are not at a one, we can just remove this value because we did not find any other ones. You move ahead and you get a zero again. Zero is of no use to you. So we move ahead. I land at a one again. And so it is time that we find out, okay, how many consecutive ones I can find now. 
So once again, I will keep a track. Now go ahead. You find a one again. So I will simply add this value. Move ahead now. And what do you see? You see a one again. So once again, I will add one to my ones found and I get a three. So far, so good. You found three ones this time. And the next step is that you move ahead. As soon as you move ahead, you will get a zero again, right? And that means, okay, the number of consecutive ones have ended. But wait, you have two values available now. This value is telling me, okay, what was the maximum number of ones I had originally found? And this value is telling me, okay, what is the new value? You have to keep a store of the maximum number of ones. So you are going to compare both of them. And since three is larger, you are going to update this value. Interesting, right? So basically you are kind of applying a dynamic programming to determine that, Hey, up till this length of the array, this is my answer. And you can just keep on moving ahead. So you see that how this is also a dynamic programming question and probably it can be a first dynamic programming question also. So now let us keep moving ahead. As soon as I move ahead, I get a one again. So we are going to keep a track, move ahead. Now it is a one again. So I update my value move ahead and now you get a zero and this is where you stop. Once again, you will compare both of these values. So I got two more ones, but the maximum consecutive ones, they are still three, correct? So if your array was up till here, your answer was three, right? So we are going to just keep on repeating the same process all the way up to end. Move your pointer ahead. Now you are at a zero. So don't do anything. Move ahead again, again, a zero, don't do anything. And now you land at a one again. What do you do? Again, start counting them one, two, three, and then four. You stop at the very end. You are now at the very end of the array and you have two values to compare. Three is telling me that this was the previous number of maximum ones I had found. And what is the current count? That is four. So you got to compare both of them. And since four is larger, I will simply update this value. And certainly this will be your answer because you have reached the very end and you don't have any more elements to parse. So you can safely say that for this entire array, the maximum number of consecutive ones you can found were just four. And notice we only did one scan of the array. So the time complexity is order of N and we are not taking any extra space. We are just taking the help of two constants and that means a constant space and that is order of one. So it cannot get efficient and optimal than this. Based upon all of this idea, let us quickly do a dry run of the code. On the left side of your screen, you have the complete code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have a sample array that is passed in as an input parameter to the function find max consecutive ones. Beginning with the dry run, what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we initialize two variables. That is the max and the count. So max is keeping a track of what are the maximum number of ones you have found. And count is keeping a track of, okay, what is the current count? So initially both of them are zero because it could be possible that I don't find any ones in the array. They can be all zeros as well. So that is why the max is zero. And now what you do next is you start a for loop where you iterate over each of the element. You iterate and then keep a track of all the maximum ones. So what are we doing over here? If the number is one, then we do a count plus plus. And at the same time, we update our max value. So what happens is if the count becomes one, the value of max also becomes one. So what happens is as I'm scanning the array, this value of count will increase, correct? And at any moment, if this value becomes larger than the max value, then you have to update the max value, correct? Because those are the maximum number of ones. So in the first iteration, the value of count is one and the value of max is one. When you move on to the second element, that is a zero, correct? So what do you do? Immediately you do your count equals to zero because now you are at the second element and you did not find a one. So this is the maximum number of ones up till now. What will happen next? You will again enter the third element. So the count becomes one, but right now max and one are the same. So you don't update it. Moving ahead, you will encounter a one again. So the value of count becomes two and this time max is smaller. So max will also get updated. And then once again, as soon as you reach a zero, the value of count becomes zero. So you see, as soon as your iteration is complete, 
the value of max is storing what was the maximum number of consecutive ones. And then at the end of the loop, this max is returned as the answer. So I really hope this clarifies a lot of things. Now, the idea over here is that this problem is fairly simple, but then there can be several more problems that can be built upon them. So what are they? I'm going to give you two such examples. So right now, this is an array, right? You know that, okay, I will have 10 elements or 20 elements. But in real life scenarios, or let us say you're working for a company, what is going to happen is this is going to come as a stream of numbers. And then you have to identify the largest block possible. Now, this block could be of anything. It could be a block of characters. It could be a block of numbers. And then you can have different separators also instead of zeros. So this is a stream and they will keep on coming in. You don't have the space to store all of these numbers. So that is why we are keep on scanning the array and then we are keeping a count of the maximum achieved so far. And this is a very good gateway to the cadence algorithm. In the cadence algorithm, we keep a count of, okay, what is the maximum sum I have obtained? What usually happens is, and that brings me to my second example. Let us say, instead of a binary array, you are given an array something like this. So I have both positive and negative numbers. And now I ask you, okay, what is the maximum sum of the consecutive numbers that you can have? Notice that I'm asking for the sum. So you want the sum to be positive and greatest. So for example, in this particular test case, I have to find out what is the maximum sum possible for consecutive elements. So if you analyze correctly, the approach will remain the same. You will start to scan these elements and then keep a track of the maximum sum you can find, right? So as soon as you move ahead, you find, okay, a sum is two, then you can add a one that is three, and then you can add more elements and that is giving you a sum of four. As soon as you add the element minus eight, the sum becomes negative. So four is largest up till now, correct? So you are going to save it. And then you will again start to move ahead. What will eventually happen is you're going to start from over here and then find all the next numbers to get you a bigger sum. Ultimately, yes, this will be your answer. But this approach is very, very, very similar to what we just discussed. So for example, in an interview, what will happen is your interviewer will start off with this very basic question. Okay, these are the maximum ones. And then they are going to ask you this particular question on the cadence algorithm. And they expect you that, okay, you derive the same solution from what we just discussed. And that makes you a better programmer. If you want to learn more about the cadence algorithm, I also have a video on it. Do remember to check it out. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that you will probably find this type of a question in your beginner coding interviews. And there is a very high chance that your interviewer will use this problem as a base and then they are going to extend this problem. We are going to see some more examples when we are discussing about, okay, what is the maximum sum in an array? And also this segues into the sliding window algorithm. So one such problem is the max consecutive ones part three, and that is available on lead code as well. So feel free to check that out and then we can discuss more on it. As per this video, did you face any problems or do you have any other suggestions in mind by which we can improve the implementation? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I simplify programming for you. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments as well. Stay tuned for my next video. Until then, see ya.